So in a delayed series of events, we are finally bringing you the April Moodkin Monthly. Uh, basically, we had some schedule con conflicts with MDI and uh, Nick rating eight days a week and everything, you know. Um, so overall, we, we decided that it was finally time midday on a Wednesday to record Moodkin Monthly because that's the only time that Nick is available as he has finally killed or not. So we're good to go here. Um, Finally, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tettles, of course. Uh, Guildless Raider. JK, I just joined Might as a trial. Um, <laughs> Rip AK. Unfortunately, the guild died. Um, and then we also got Nick here. I just want to say World 8 EU 3rd Raider. Out yeah. of the version from DE Blackhand. Yeah, hold on. The A the Asians are really coming up here. We oh, got man. They, AFKR, they Skyline, um, a couple of the Alpha. There's another one that I don't really remember anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the dude Chinese Chinese raiders are owning. Uh, this I mean, team they're, for sure. they're also raiding like eight, nine days a week. Yeah, so nine days a week. Yeah, <laughs> only to, only to match the Germans eight days a week. That the Asians have to raid nine. So <laughs> that's a thing. All right. Uh, so big. Also, big shout out to all of our Patreons: Arui, Mr. Sliggy, Hamflaps, Krona, Nevernude, Saro, Solanus, Tiggs, Zwifta, and Gesu. So big ups to all you guys. Thank you guys so much. All right. So first topic we got is MDI discussion. Nick, have you been paying attention to the MDI at all? Not at all. All right. I mean, I've watched like some. Uh, matches where you were mm -hmm. casting, but only because you were casting. Oh, hell That's yes. Alright, anyway, so basically the NDI has wrapped up recently, and we saw one Moonkin across the whole entire event. <laughs> I'm proud to say that that was a lot more than other classes that we saw, so we were, we were represented. We did lose. So... Maybe maybe the only solace is that we were represented, but the fact that we lost is also unfortunate. Um, Moonkin in the MDI won't be seen because its damage is pretty poor. Based, what keys did they even play? Uh, they're playing 19s. Yeah, okay. I don't know. So, no. so basically, the, the, the MDI is like coming down to right now is a lot of burst AoE. And there's a lot of required melee kicks just because of how the nature of the dungeons are set up. So Moonkin, Moonk while Solar Beam would actually be wild, I'm not even entirely sure that all the trash would die inside the Solar Beam even. So in Legion, we had a lot of stuff that would like... Like the first pull of Vault of the Wardens, if you like rounded up like all the fucking trash in that room, or like um, one of the pulls in Court of Stars, all of the trash would just kind of die in a Solar Beam, but right now the trash kind of lives forever. So you need just like a ton of melee kicks. So that, in conjunction with balance, is just kind of um, lackluster damage, just because Starfall's pretty trash. Uh, kind of puts <laughs> us in trash. a kind of puts us in an awkward spot, especially for MDI level stuff. As for key pushing, I still think Moonkin is Moonkin isn't an S tier ranged class. I think that's only Elemental Shaman, but it's definitely an A tier ranged class. Um, I would say I would say that Moonkin, Mage, and Hunter are all A tier range classes, and the reason for that being is just because of how much utility we have. Right? We got trees, mm -hmm. we got Solar Beam. I mean, even though our damage is lackluster, the fact that we do have all that utility really puts us in a good spot. And then, like, if you think about it, if we do ever really return to that Legion form of ridiculous ass AOE, then we're gonna. <laughs> Then I think we're gonna be in a pretty good spot, so we're just gonna hope uh, that eight point two is the the reckoning tier where Moon can actually get some AOE, and then we'll really own. That's true. Yeah, just bring back uh, hasted Starfall, I guess. Yep. And then I guess some good stuff. Uh, hasted Starfall was pretty good, but I don't think that would solve the issues right now. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Unfortunately. Um. And then as for the MDI, we saw. From the West Cup, we saw Method EU pretty much being super, super dominant. And then we had Method NA and Abracadabra looking like they're on a similar level as one another with uh, pretty 
they had some inconsistencies, but overall they were both pretty good. And then we had 40k who initially looked like they were not going to be super solid, super solid, but looked like the Fat Shark Overlords could be pretty good if they put in enough time and practice. Um, so yeah, Fat Shark, yes, world dominance. Anyways, uh, as for the East Cup, there was like two really good Chinese teams and Battle for Champion and Team D, but overall that region was. Really lacking just because of the lack of representation from OCE teams, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. All right. I guess that's a good place to wrap that up. So we got Incarn versus Star Lord. Um, Nick, you wanna you wanna start us off with that? All right. So basically, we got asked a ton uh, about incarnation versus Star Lord. On what fights he would play Star Lord, what fights he would play incarnation, and um basically it doesn't matter what you play <laughs> no um starlord is usually like on longer fights with like not that much movement it's usually better than incarnation it pulls off whenever you like yeah whenever you have like tons of or well a long fight and i would say on like as an example jaina it's still fine there's a lot of movement but you can handle it um i played it on una too just because it felt way better on P3 because of something else that was um, you couldn't stand still for like 30 seconds. So Incarnation just lost like a ton of value on that fight on Mythic. Um, that's also a good reason. If you just can't stand still for Incarnation and you have to move like a fuck ton, then why play Incarnation, right? Yeah, of course. So basically a lot of the time too, um, if you actually can go through that 30 second window and not have to move, but then you have to move within that 2.30 downtime of Incarn, then it, then it could be a lot better because of how Star-Lord ends up. Like, just, if you have to move a lot on your Star-Lord and you're not actually able to generate as much Astral Powers that you normally would, then Star-Lord's value is innately worse. Um, Star-Lord is, like, it sims, like, a lot better, so it's, it's really easy to take, but like Nick said, that row is just... For better or worse, so it's, it's 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 not impactful enough to where you get punished for taking either one, right? Yeah, Be because neither neither one is like so far ahead of one another. Because incarnation is just so practical, um, it's really easy to use. And then you have Star Lord, which is like it's it's a little bit more complicated. Obviously, it's you can cancel aura it but i think a common misconception as well is that you have to be able to cancel aura well to use star lord and i think that's incorrect i think you should i think you should be picking star lord and incarn based on the encounter not necessarily based on whether or not you can cancel aura or not um so that's something that you should also uh take into account and then as for mythic plus nick what are your initial thoughts on star lord and mythic plus me as a like huge mythic plus player of course oh yeah um, big gamer i never run star lord. i don't see the point i do i don't do like pushing mm -hmm. i i usually do my 15s to like 19s or something and i just pick incarnation because it's easier to play um i don't have to think about it much and i just put it up for like big ass pulls or like bosses or something and then works out I don't know about pushing. Maybe you want to play Starlord. I've, I've heard that you might play Starlord in like some dungeons, right? But um, I I definitely wouldn't play it unless you're doing like really, really high keys and it's maybe practical in one or two dungeons, one specific dungeon or two dungeons. Um, besides that, also um, about the, the cancel thing that Tattles talked about, um, I... Legit never cancel it once in on Uunat, not even once the entire fight because it worked out quite well and it's just more thinking. That fight is like so pract it's it's so hard. If you fuck up once, you're wiping the entire raid, uh, mostly, and that's why I just didn't think about it much. I just like try to pull for like whenever I ran out of the stacks and then I just get back to three stacks ASAP and repeat, which worked out quite well for that fight. So, yeah. Yeah, and then to just, like, kind of add on that point about what Nick was saying about using it in, like, 15 to 19 level stuff, if you're not going to get, like, a, I guess a full 30-second use of Incarn in, like, a Mythic Dungeon, then, like, it could be better for you to play Star-Lord. But I think a lot of the time the trash packs are going to last for so long 
that it's going to be super easy for you to it's going to be super easy for you to want to play Incarn, and especially because Incarn just gets so much more efficiency of damage just because of how much downtime there is built in whenever you're running back pack to pack and stuff like that. Um, it's just like free time that your Incarn is recharging. In addition to that, Star Lord, you also do lose some stack uptime just because of like dropping combat and everything. So it's kind it's kind of tricky to be looking to play Star Lord and Mythic Plus. I think overall they're close enough to where you could pl you could give merit to playing one or the other. But I think unless the pack is dying before your Incarn ends up ending, I think you're better off playing Incarnation just in Mythic Plus. Mm -hmm. Um, but overall that 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 row that tier seventy five row the balance between Incarnation and Star Lord is just so close that. You're never really going to pick, be picking the wrong thing, right? I don't think there's ever really like, oh, this is a bad choice. I, I think there are times where Incarn is like slightly favored over Star Lord, but it's never favored so much that it's like, oh wow, you should not be playing the other. It's just, it's just one of those things. I don't know that that row. Yeah, that row is kind the of. The only thing cool. I can I can think about right now would be Jaina if you're progging still P three. Uh, incarnation is just so much more practical because you have the burst, which is way yeah. better. But that's like the only thing where I would say, yeah, you should use incarnation. And and even then, Star Lord still is pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. And if you have the damage, which you should at this point, uh, you can just run that too if you feel more comfortable with it. So kind of segueing into Crucible Storms, do you think Incarn is better on Cabal for Mythic? Uh, for non tanks, like uh, so, so basically there are two there are two types of moonkins you can be on yeah. uh, on the restless cabal. You can either be the tank moonkin who ends up tanking uh, what not Zach Sash, but the other woman, whatever the caster one. Yeah, the caster lady. Uh, you can either be the the moonkin that tanks the caster lady, or you can be a DPS moonkin. And you, I I think Incarn is like way better for DPSing. I think I actually think Incarn is better at both positions. Uh, do you think that Star Lord is better for DPSing though? Uh, I played it. Yeah. On Cabal, and I wasn't uh, tanking the the caster. Yeah. I think I felt better at all. I I can't actually remember. It's so far. It's like ten days, right? <laughs> it's ten days ago. It. <laughs> it's ten days ago. Back yeah, but in I, my I think day. Just, pretty sure I played both, and Star Lord just felt way better. Okay. Um. Especially because you had those movement parts where you just pull it up and then you just put out two star searches, get your two stacks, and then you moved on and could pull again. Same uh, as Unat, which basically the same. Yeah, I, I think it's better. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we also have. Uh, so I want I want to give a minute to talk about like tanking Restless Cabal. So that's actually something that's really uh, interesting for Balance Druid is the fact that our class is unkillable. <laughs> Shocker. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Moonkin does not take a lot of damage and we are the best, uh, the best suited to be able to tank Restless Cabal. And this is for a couple of reasons. Switch Hitter is one of those reasons. <laughs> so basically... If you have a 415 piece with switch hitter on it, which is, um, what is it? Is it Mechatork Bomber Vest or is it Gronk Pelt Vest? Uh, it's Mechatork. Okay, so Mechatork then... Chest or uh, the Hood of Slithering Loa. So basically the Streaking Star Swirling Sands hat. That Both mm -hmm. of those pieces have uh, a switch hitter okay. trait on them. So whenever you're playing Guardian Affinity and you press Frenzied Regen, you get like 18% avoidance just from one switch hitter trait. It's it's retarded. Which means you can have a a hundred percent uh you can have sixty-five-ish percent uptime on avoidance cap, which is twenty percent DR. Which, if you pair that with any gem high traits or other uh defensive traits, I actually used the engineering helmet. With my Mechatork Bomber Vest. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> because because the, the uh, Absorbitron from the Engineering Helmet will get overkilled. So it'll absorb a full hit of whatever you're getting hit by. So I actually, if I saw the Absorbitron up and there was a large void crash near me, even the biggest one, I would stand in it. 
That's our druid did the same. It looked so stupid. It sometimes. was so like, wild. And then I would scream. Then I would scream in voice. I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm going in!" And then my guild is like, "Wait, you're you're actually just a spurg. What are you doing?" And like, "Oh my god, this is it. This is it. This is it." I would just hype myself up to suck those annoyed, enormous void crash zones because I'm wild like that. Um, but yeah, no, Moonkin's actually super good at uh, tanking Restless Cabal. So basically, you end up just wanting defensives whenever you phase uh, Fat Man. Uh, we're just going to call her Fat Man and Caster Woman. So whenever you do face Fat Man, you're going to get those Caster as that you do have to interrupt out, right? Um, and you're going to want a defensive whenever they're blowing up, or you're going to want to save your Frenzy Regent so your Void is capped for that. You're going to want to switch Hitter Trade just because that shit's OP. Um, beyond that, you're going to want to also save your Bark Skin for uh, those ads exploding too from the Fat Man. And then, like, the last thing to really note is how many... You need to really make sure that you're getting a ton of defenses whenever Fat Man's pushing with the Void Stone, and then whenever you have Lightning comboed with the adds, because... So basically, Fat Man with the Void Stone is... You you can't receive healing for a couple seconds, so the Caster Woman's still casting on you. And depending on what she's casting, you can actually just get wrecked there. So I normally ate Pain Suppression, Iron Bark, and then had my own personal Bark Skin for that. Uh, I, I kind of staggered them, so I'd eat Paint Suppression and Bark Skin whenever the, uh, whenever the Void Stone was actually active, and then I'd Bark Skin the explosion um, of the adds like, just a couple seconds later, so I'd kind of stagger when my Bark Skin's getting popped, just to make sure that I am not going to get just destroyed. Um, and then the Lightning is basically you're just taking a lot of raid wide damage, and you're not going to be able to get healed, even with a Beacon. You should get a Beacon on you as well, from a Paladin healer. Yeah. Because that shit's OP. Um, but beyond that, I think that's all I wanted to touch on for Restless Cabal tanking. Balance is really good at that, and if uh, you're using another class like a mage, you should probably uh, you should probably elect to be tanking it because Moonkin is pretty fucking unkillable, especially later on in that fight. Yep. All right. So in other news, in in a ranged only fight. Ooh, not unsurprisingly fielding 12 Warlocks, but really, how good is Moonkin on Ooh, not Nick? What do you think? I actually don't want to talk about this boss anymore. I'm so annoyed from it, but um, I don't... I It felt okay. It felt really good, to be honest. Okay. You, you had all your utility still, like... I think Innovate is still pretty huge on that fight, especially if you're 3 healing. Just that Innovate pumps so hard for your healers. Um. You also just nuked the boss so goddamn hard on P3, which is I I just I did so much damage on P3 to that boss. It's insane. Were, were you top like damage on, in P3 or not top? But I'm on point with like the warlocks and the uh, shamans usually on most pulls. Okay, so you're so, like, just we are on the same so, level. Yeah. So you're just close. Okay, even though they're getting a lot of AOE to single target conversion through flame shock and agony. Um, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um. It's, I don't know, you, it's a lot of movement, it's hard to manage, but it's like a script. If you play Starlord, legit, everything is the same for every pull. You, you do the same, you, you, reach, you reach your, like, a Kenic Pulsar proc, like, at the same point every time, and it just, like, plays the same. It, it plays like a script, so it's very easy to play at some point if you have, like, 450 pulls on it. Um, and... I don't think you want to stack on boomies or anything. Uh, Warlocks are still good. Shams are still good because of the Arng shit. Still hate that mechanic. Um, yeah, that one's a bit wild. Uh, did you guys end know. up sh summoning your shamans to the end time so they could reset we their did, Yeah, nice. We had our slaves into end time putting <laughs> us like, every, two, every two pulls. No. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of sad that it turned out that way, but... That's so Whatever. troll. It was, a, it was a really good boss to progress on. It was hard. Do you think it's overtuned? No. It should stay like this. Okay. It shouldn't get nerfed at all. I don't want to, like, this might sound a bit, like, toxic or something, but I don't want to, like, the noobish skills to kill it because it should feel like it's an achievement to get it down. I mean, noobish guilds won't be like, killing it. Top because... 50 plus, yeah. Okay, you don't think top fifty plus <laughs> guilds should be killing it? Hold on, wait a second. I, I don't think I don't think exhausts with that one K puts should kill it. 
Well, Exorcist shouldn't kill it because they're I... playing bad, not... Okay, Everyone anyway. who's playing bad you should, shouldn't kill it. They shouldn't nerf it. They, they, maybe they should nerf it like 5% HP or something, but just like don't nerf the mechanics. I mean, dude, that that <laughs> that warlock stack shit was the the end joke of a lot of memes about melee in, in raid. Yep. Do you think I mean, that do you think that warlock is just way better than Moonkin on that fight? No, they only played Moonkin uh, warlock. I mean, because of the uh, the beams, right? Uh, yeah, could, like, I would assume so. And even then, like Logok as an example in method. When they killed it, they he did such a great job. He, like he did so much damage and even taunted the boss at the oh, end. Oh, dude, he salvaged that it... pull. Holy yeah. shit, that taunt! Barry, I I talked to him clutch. like through half of progression, and we always kept in contact what we like what he did and what I did. And um, he's like, yeah, I'm kind of sad that I'm getting benched for warlock, but at the same time, um, it's like <laughs> he's like kind of sad because. He did so good. He did like better than most of those warlock alts, especially some of them. And I think it's still a mistake that they put in twelve warlocks. Yeah, they should have kept like I don't know, maybe eight, ten, and kept in like logok and people who did like really well, especially like play mechanics like the resonance, uh, who never failed once and then just get benched because they they're not a warlock. Just because of class right. stacking lol. Yeah. And you could always prevent two stacks from the beam, so it's not like it's you're dead yeah. if you if you're in P three. That's I mean, just not true. What is Moonkin survivability like whenever they do have the 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 resonance The torment or or the was insatiable hunger, right? The circle? What's the circle called? The circle is torment, yeah. Okay, yeah. The torment, um It's rough at some times. <laughs> um like even if you have like a switch hitter, because shields don't get taken off you, right? Yeah, well, what you do is on, on the beams, you usually just, if, if needed, you bark skin, and mm -hmm. then you can still, like, swift win yourself for the uh, switch hitter shield. Yeah. And you still have void stone from healers and such, which kind of help too. But it's still kind of kind of hard sometimes. It's, it's definitely harder than, like, being a shaman and just having even more, like, survivability. In that moment, I mean, shaman isn't shaman survivability like really bad on that fight? I don't think so. They're like way squi sure they're they like, like way squishier than us, right? Because they have to sit in like fucking ghost wolf to actually be able to get dr and shit. It still doesn't matter if you're sitting in. If you survive, it's fine. That's fair. I mean, I had like the the pull before we killed was a one percent wipe, and I had the first torment, and all I did was I. Like pressed my cooldowns, I blasted the boss for 15 seconds, then I played the first beams with the torment, and then after that I just suicided myself with the uh with the crown to kill the ads. Good guy, Nick. Then I watched, <laughs> then I watched the last two minutes of my guild playing the boss and then wiping at one percent. It felt <laughs> great, man. It felt great. I'm telling you, there would have been a funny uh point of view if it died at that point. <laughs> When some lose some as you hang out <laughs> on the ground floor POV. Yeah. yeah. I All mean, right. at some point you just can't hear the torments anymore. You just need to yeah. sacrifice them. So what was streaming progression like for you guys this year? It was hella great. I know we had uh, Nex on like last show and he, he kind of talked about like what you guys thought initially. So what are you guys thinking about after the fact? And like, do you think you're going to end up streaming moving forward or? So... All I can say at this point is um, we will talk about it. We will analyze what happened, how it turned out, and how everyone feels about it. Yeah. And if we think it was a good idea, we're going to stream a Shara. And if someone has issues with it, then we probably won't. But so far, it looks like we're going to stream a Shara, I would say. It turned out really good. Like, next had, like, average 800 views or something over the entire progression. And we do we did make some money. All the donations are getting split between our raiders, which is like quite good for us too, because everyone is getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. And um we got a lot of like attention too, especially because we did so good on UNAT. Like we were for some time we were on point with like pieces and methods. We were like a bit far behind because we didn't rate as much as them. 
but we 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 are up there with them. So it felt really really good. Cool. All right. And so uh, recently we've had uh, some PTR testing announced. Um, we have some other stuff on the eight point two PTR with the essences in the Mechagon dungeon. Um, overall. So I think it's a bit early for PTR testing, personally. I understand that they always want to, like, ram it out right after the raid tier is kind of over. But to me, to me, it definitely seems like it's a bit early. Um, especially since, like, I don't know, we've only had, like, what? I think it's, like, eight guilds at this point kill Unat. So we're we're trying to... We're already, tr like, trying to, like, raid test Palace of Ashara. I kind of understand that that Crucible of Storms was like supposed to be like an in intermediary like middle raid but <laughs> even then it's uh, that's a lot dude like for it for, didn't for... fit like a, like intermediate raid at all because yeah. most bosses are like actually really hard and Unat is probably the hardest boss in uh battle and BFA so far uh, I'd say it had more pulls than kill Jaden as a point mm -hmm. of reference like Mm -hmm. I mean, Kill Jaden had like a lot of different issues. Kill Jaden was like notoriously like very buggy. And additionally to that, the 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 circles on the ground were just that was like actually just the most frustrating fucking mechanic like ever because it was like insta wipe your whole entire group. Like the the trine mechanic can be frustrating as well, but once you get your whole entire uh, guild on the same page in terms of how to deal with those, like how you end up moving like most of the time it goes like what ocean first and then lightning right what we did is uh void first then ocean then okay. lightning okay yeah okay um, and at some point you just you just know like you see someone in, against uh, next to you and it's like oh it's that dude i know he's going to run before me so I just wait you know you you know your raiders at some point like after 400 points you know who's going to move first and who waits and stuff like that so it's super safe at some point yeah, I mean, at some point, I'm sure it becomes, like, less agitating. K KJ mm -hmm. was, like, awful in a different way, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I know you and I have discussed a bit off off broadcast about the what we thought about the essences. Um, obviously, the essences aren't super fleshed out. And so we, I think we also have, like, a little bit differing opinion of a lot of people in terms of the essences. So basically what... So let me try to lay this out. What the essences are trying to solve is that they're trying to give the players more choice. Um, and with that, they want the players to be able to like pick essences that fill every single situation similar to how like legendaries were at the end of Legion. And and essences are like an add-on to the Azer Azerite system. But my major point of concern is like essences won't end up giving you choice that you're only going to pick one similar to how the azrite system currently is with like streaking stars and arcanic pulsar what are you drinking nick is that like a grape soda what the hell is that yeah <laughs> dude, that looks, dude, that looks good hell yeah it does um but yeah no i'm just concerned with the i'm just concerned with essences not giving you choice like i, I I hope I hope the essence system owns. Like I really hope that it's great, but right now I'm not convinced. They can fix it though, and they do have some time to fix it. And I, I hope that they got the essences onto the PTR early enough to be able to get a lot of feedback in terms of what uh, people think about the essences. Mm -hmm. And I hope the essence system is great, but I'm not convinced. I can just agree. I don't. I hope they 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 make it into a good system, but there's there's potential. But mm -hmm. we saw. Blizzard doing some weird stuff before and ruining some systems and uh, it might happen again, hopefully not. It could like fix all of the class issues or some of the class issues. Um, it could help out a bunch of classes to finally be balanced more. It could just turn into a whole clusterfuck where warlocks are like 20% more damage than any other class. Stop, stop, again. stop, stop. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> I I can see it all, but hopefully uh, it just turns out good. Dude, another, have to wait another for, like, warlock tier? Those, right? Holy shit. I don't want another warlock tier. Dude, if we had another warlock tier, at what point do we just re-roll? I'm I'm never going to re-roll, buddy. I'm never gonna re-roll <laughs> either, but like what the fuck? Why? Why is that I, class so OP? I think it's time for a boomy tier, to be honest. We just stack like ten boomies, like back what what was it like? 
Cataclysm or something? Fra- I don't... Yeah, so, so the last time was Blackrock Foundry. And then the time before that, it was like Heroic Ragnaros, I'm pretty sure. So... <laughs> It's time again, buddy. It's time. Okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, they buffed Starfall to the point where it's best on single target again, and we played that uh, in a row. Like, uh, re- keep, keep going, keep going. I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, I, if this, if fucking warlocks aren't like bullshit broken, moon, this is like a moon tier. Bod was also like very similar in terms of like that. Our class was fucking wild, like. This is a good mm-hmm. class, like, good class. So, no complaints here, but what the fuck are Warlocks? <laughs> Anyways. Also Shadow Priest at the moment. Dude, the fact that Shadow Priests are fucking dwarfed by Warlocks is also, like, a big... It's, like, a really big thinker. Though, I remember uh, Shadow Priest in Old Year when they were crying and re-rolling to Boomkin because their class sucked so bad. Like, hey, do how, how do I play Boomy? How does this work? <laughs> oh. She said... I remember that too, dude. Oh. That was great. They're also adding another dungeon, the Mechagon. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any do you have any expectations or thoughts about that? I hope it's going to be as great as uh Return of Karazan. Hera? That felt so good. And I hope it's a like actually good dungeon. I don't like all of the BFA dungeons at the moment. I I think they're all pretty bad compared to like Legion dungeons. Yeah. Legion cool. felt like way better for some reason i mean we can kind of talk about that so i actually think that the bfa dungeons are a little bit better by design so the the legion dungeons a lot of them hold on don't 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 scrunch your face up like that um so the legion dungeons a lot of them by design were a little bit more bullshit in terms of like oh uh, yes i got bolted <laughs> on shade of xavius and then into a drain and instantly <laughs> died or or the <laughs> or the classic Oh fuck, I got the overlap on Hersha and instantly exploded. Oh no! <laughs> or everybody's fan favorite, I died three times on God King Scovald in, <laughs> in 15 seconds. Like, So the Legion Dungeons were a lot of bullshit sometimes. Yeah. BFA Dungeons are not bullshit, but BFA Dungeons have different issues. BFA Dungeons are like... I, I wrote a Wowhead article about this too. B, uh, BFA Dungeons have a lot of differing issues, which... I can't personally tell why. I, I understand whenever people say they feel bad, but I can't tell like what actually feels so bad about them relative to Legion Dungeons. I can't tell if it was people were more excited and it was like a honeymoon phase for like pushing keys in Legion, and so everybody was like amped up and shit, or if it was something else, but it's really hard for me to kind of gauge, because I think overall, I think the dungeons are better designed. And I wonder if we sent the dungeons back if we took all the BFA dungeons and put them in Legion, like, whenever Legion was current, if it would be any different? For me, personally, I feel like they all play the same. Like The, the in BFA Legion, dungeons? Yeah, in Legion, like, every dungeon felt, like, different. You had, like, Morph Swords compared to, like, Orts of Valor. They, they were completely different. I same mean, for so yeah, you DHT. have, like, you have, like, King's Rest compared to, like, a Tal Dazara Freehold, right? They they still play the same. There's nothing special about them. It's just a dungeon. You kill the trash. You kill the boss, and then that's it. Like, I I just feel like like Code of Stars was something way different than than any other dungeon, right? They yeah. were they were like different each other. Like Arcway with the different path and like how you played out. You don't have that in in in. Um, yeah, you do. Waycross Manor. Well, yeah, but I no. Well, that's just trash design for me, to be honest. Like, okay. that, it doesn't feel good at all. I prefer open Compared concept like... design dungeons, too. I much prefer the Eye of Ashar, Freehold, Atal Dazar. Oh, man, uh, Eye of Ashar. What a great dungeon. Uh, Goddamn. Halls of Valor style, where you can actually you actually have, like, a lot of freedom with where you're going boss-wise, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm way with you there in terms of, like, free open design. I don't think the dungeons are, like, designed innately, like, necessarily poorly. I think there's some... Some major issues that I do have with some of the dungeons, notably uh, King's Rest, Shrine of the Storm, and Siege of Boralus, I have, like, I take major issue with those three dungeons just because of some things that that are in the dungeons. Basically, King's Rest is 
a 115% tube where you can't deviate any of your pulls, and then you have the Golden Serpent, which might actually be like the hardest boss in any fucking dungeon by a mile. And then you got Cool of the Butcher, which is a huge bitch. Uh, and then Dazar, which is another... You have, you have two six-minute fights inside of one dungeon. Yeah. That's yeah. A real winner for me. Um, I don't know. And then, like, Siege of Morales is like Spotter.exe, where you fucking <laughs> carry that bitch around, and then you got Shrine of, the, <laughs> Shrine of the Storm, which uh, on the MDI stage is completely negated by fucking Shadow Meld, but you also have Shrine of the Storm, which is, like, make or break within the first, like, 30 seconds, and it's, like, in a melee-only dungeon because of how many kicks that are required, and it's like, I want to blow yeah. my brains out, dude. The dungeon is ass. Anyways. You you only had that really for like one dungeon, which was what was it called? The one next to DHT in, in Legion. I don't remember the name. Black or cold? The one with the mage. Yeah, I don't I I, I don't like the dungeon at all. It oh, okay. feels so bad. I don't know. I don't know about but it's you. It's like the only dungeon where I felt like, oh man, this dungeon sucks. The other ones were like kinda interesting. <laughs> Hold on, wait a second. Ha I think you've forgotten a dungeon. The the fan favorite Seat of the Triumvirate. Oh, Seat of the Triumvirate. Uh, I guess. That dungeon was ass. Yeah. That was that was like the worst. Okay, I I don't think there is a battle for Azeroth dungeon that is act actually I think I'd run to King's Rest like a thousand times over than ever fucking setting foot back in Seat of the Triumvirate. That dungeon was horrible. That's true, yeah. And if the Mecha God is see the Triumvirate, I'm going to fucking scream. Some what of the was... some of the trash is actually kind of cancer in Mecha God. I've actually seen a little bit on it, uh, but I think overall, I think the bosses are designed kind of cool. So I hope. Also, Void of Wardens wasn't that cool either. No okay. fan. But then no, we had we had upper and lower Karazhan, which. Upper yeah, Karazhan? Totally insane. Upper Karazhan <laughs> was okay. I was not a fan of Upper Karazhan because it felt like King's Resty in terms of like yeah. you don't really have any chance to do anything else and and Medivh was a bit of a bitch. Mm -hmm. But then you had Lower Karazhan which was like arguably the best dungeon so I'm, you, you win some, you lose some I guess. Also, what was that? Oh, Cathedral of the Eternal Night. Uh, Cathedral was... of Eternal Night was uh, was very bad for a long time, and it got fixed at the very <laughs> yeah. end. So I don't I guess I, that's why I don't like it at all. I don't know how to feel about it, but it, <laughs> it was very bad for a while, though. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the last two bosses were just like ridiculously overtuned, and they felt like not doable. So, mm -hmm. oh well. All right. Yeah, but I'm I'm interested into Mechagon. I hope the Mechagon's uh, really good. Like, yeah. Yeah. The mecha dungeon or whatever, mega dungeon or whatever they call it. Yeah, I think they're gonna split it into two separate parts like Kara. I think they're gonna be like upper mechagon and lower mechagon. Hopefully, yeah. Not not like probably not by name, right? <laughs> East Left mechagon, mechagon and right mechagon. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um But yeah, no, so I think that's uh that's all we got for eight point two in essence is you got anything else you wanna say, yeah. Nick? Um not really. I don't know. I'm I'm hyped for eight point two. Hopefully they fix the systems they have implemented in PTR right now. And I'm looking forward to it because I think it's going to be one of those patches, like um, the Enterus one, where you have like a huge amount of content and it feels good again. Most classes are balanced. Like it feels like BFA just came out of beta. That's what I hope for. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I hope, I hope 8.2 fixes a lot of issues that I have with the game. I, th I think it can be really good. But yeah. It could also turn into a Morph Souls grind again with the neck. Stop, 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 <laughs> stop. No, wrong. I remember. No, no more of that shit. Fuck off. That, <laughs> that, that was actually the only time that I actually thought about quitting WoW. Is grinding fucking Morph Souls. That, yeah. That, that was painful. Brr, brr. I, I had to do that in a pug. I didn't get to, I didn't do it with a guild group. Oh, no. I did it in pugs, dude. It was awful. Oh, no, Kettle. Ah! Oh. Think about okay, that. Yeah. That was it. Oh, that was my peak. All right. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I think that's going to be it for us today. Um, as always, you can check Nick out on his stream, twitch.tv slash Nick Druid. 
Um, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash titles. Make sure to check out our Discord, our Patreon, um, all of our links down in the description below. Uh, we should have another Moonkin Monthly this month. Um, we'll bring on a guest and we'll talk about whatever the topical topic we feel like is good to be discussing there. Um, but overall, that is it for us this month. Uh, for April, sorry for the delay. Uh, Nick was raiding again huh. eight days a April week. April Fools. <laughs> ha! April <laughs> Fools. <laughs> Happy May 8th. Um, anyways, yeah. So I appreciate it. Thanks guys so much. I'll see you later. Peace. Bye.